Welcome to this talk on drive lasers for EUV lithography, creating high-tech customer value. My name is Matthias Wissert. I am the head of the EUV technology R&D department at Trumpf. Today, I would like to answer three main questions, which will guide us through this presentation. What is and why do we need EUV lithography? How does the Trumpf source drive laser for EUV lithography work? And what is the current market status? Let us start with the first question. What is and why do we need EUV lithography? By looking at the following graph, probably one of the most shown graphs of all time, Moore's Law. Gordon Moore's prediction, first made in 1965 and refined in 1975 to a doubling of the number of components per integrated circuit per two years, has been upheld ever since. Seeing that physical limitations in terms of transistor size are closer and closer, chip performance will be driven more and more by architecture choices. But as of today, exposure wavelength is still a major driving force. Extreme ultraviolet lithography, or EUV lithography for short, enables the continuation of Moore's law through the coming decade by reducing wafer exposure wavelengths from 193 nanometers to 13.5 nanometers. How is this EUV radiation generated? Let us look at a schematic view of the overall process, which can be decomposed in three steps. First, a CO2 laser beam is amplified to very high powers. Second, a tin droplet is hit with this laser beam, creating 13.5 nanometer plasma emission from highly charged ions. Third, the emitted radiation is then focused using a so-called collector mirror and transmitted via reflective optics, first onto a lithography mask, then on the wafer, where the exposure happens. For each step, highly sophisticated technology is needed, where Trumpf provides the source drive laser and optical elements towards the tin droplet, Zeiss the UV optics, and ASML the tin droplet generation, the wafer stage, as well as the overall system integration. We will now focus on the contribution of Trumpf the source CO2 drive laser. How does the Trumpf source drive laser for EUV lithography work? Let's enjoy a short visualization of how this laser beam is generated first. Wafer exposure, as you're all well aware, happens in a clean room. In fact, the Trumpf drive laser has its own fab level from where the beam then propagates to the next floor. Let us now zoom into our machine. First, a short pulse of laser beam is generated. It is then amplified by passing multiple times through a first amplifier stage. As you can see, there are in fact two pulses, pre-pulse and main pulse, which will both hit the droplet. The beam then passes through further optics and, most importantly, amplifier stages, constantly increasing its power. We then have to make sure both beams will have the right optical properties on the droplet, especially the right focus. Finally, we hit the droplet first with the pre-pulse to bring it in the right shape, then with the main pulse to generate as much UV light as possible. 50,000 times per second. Let us now look at the drive laser system in detail. To ensure not only functionality, but also serviceability, the system is decomposed in various modules and submodules. The high power seat module is responsible for generating the laser light, bringing it to the right temporal length and providing first amplification. The system then includes four cascaded power amplifiers, PAs, in the high power amplification chain. You see, we like high power, even in our product names. To give the exact amplification needed, they have individually optimized geometry and settings. The amplifiers are connected by relay optics, which serve to transfer the light, 
but also to continuously shape the beam properties as needed. Of course, there is extensive metrology between amplifiers and at the drive laser exit to monitor performance. Significant metrology tools are also needed to be developed to check the system performance before it is shipped. Trumpf also provides the beam transport system and focus assembly elements to the droplet, from where the overall system continues with the EUV light. A special challenge for these components is the thermal stability, as the propagation through these elements happens at maximum laser power. I would like to show you now some key parameters of the source drive laser to give an impression of the overall complexity and performance of the system. The Trump system is composed of about 450,000 parts. That these parts, weighing about 17 tons, have been assembled correctly is checked via over 1,000 specification lines for the final drive laser. Each module and submodule has its own additional specification lines in pre-qualification. There are over 500 meters of optical path from the first seed laser to the droplet, which puts very demanding specifications on all parts, but especially on the about 400 optical elements that are included in the system. Obviously, the arrangement of all these elements during production including not only the optical path, but also gas supply, cooling, water, controls, or safety, to only mention a few, requires excellent understanding of the service requirements before starting development, as well as extensive, but still predictably executable procedures. About 300 suppliers contribute to the system, from screws to active optical elements. In the end, an average power of about 30 kilowatts is achieved at the CO2 wavelength of 10.6 micrometers. I would now like to take you along to take a glimpse of the production facilities of our system. Here, you can see the clean room facilities, where our high power seat modules, as well as the beam transport system elements, are manufactured. On the seat module, at selected module interfaces, the system is set up and the performance monitored. The system is built in a way that there are specific ports for the production engineers to properly set up the system, and only a limited number of ports necessary and accessible later for system install at the customer. You can also see the beam transport system being assembled. This specific module is the so-called periscope, which serves as a connection between the drive laser and the EUV generation in the upper floor at the factory. You can also see a check of mirror performance for optical quality before it will be integrated into the overall system. Now, you can see our high power amplification chain production, where of course, wherever safely possible, tasks are parallelized. The engineer on the right checks whether beam tubes have been correctly assembled before performing a pressure test for tightness. Of course, all parts and modules produced outside the clean room are cleaned before packaging. I would like to conclude this section with the image of one of our colleagues, Michael Kösters, who has been together with his researchers from Zeiss and the Fraunhofer Institute for Applied Optics, awarded the German Future Prize 2020 by Federal President Frank-Walter Steinmeier. In fact, this is the second time Trumpf has been awarded this prestigious award, and you will be enjoying a talk by 2013 recipient Dirk Sutter later today. With this, I would like to go to the third and last section. What is the current market status? We at Trumpf have been working on lasers for EUV lithography for over 15 years. The cooperation started with US-based company Symer in 2005, and the collaboration continued when ASML acquired Symer in 2013. In this time, we have accompanied EUV lithography from first lab prototypes to the end customer. This long-lasting relationship is key to the achievements of today. Integration with ASML during the R&D process is high, and all plans for the future are tightly aligned via technology roadmaps, both on the short and the long term. Especially over the last years, the number of EUV tools at end customer has been strongly increasing. In fact, the installed base at end customers has more than doubled over the last two years. Productivity has also been increased significantly. 
the number of wafers exposed on EUV systems grows exponentially. To further increase productivity, many improvements in our drive laser system for power, as well as for availability, are planned. The demand for new tools has been rising continuously, and the COVID crisis has further increased this demand. At end customers worldwide, new facilities are built and prepared for additional high-performance machines. Finally, and I believe this is one of the best compliments the technology can get, EUV is even used in marketing for new chips. So not only are new high-end chips introduced with EUV technology included, but EUV is specifically mentioned as the manufacturing process. Demand by now not only includes machines for processor manufacturing, but also for memory applications. We are looking forward to make all this possible with our machines and especially with all the people contributing to this technology every day, from the first concept ideas to on-site support at the end customer sites. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention. I am looking forward to your questions later in the chat.